What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one we're going to take a look back at my FPL season for 2022-23, how I ended up getting on in game week 38, where I finished in terms of overall rank, and then we'll take a look at some of the highs and lows throughout the season just gone. This will probably be the last video for this season now. We'll take a little bit of a break until the fixtures come out, and then obviously a little bit more of a break then until the prices start coming out, and then the game launches for 2023. 324. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Plenty of content coming next season, and let's jump into this one. So for my team, game week 38 ended up being a little bit of an anti-climax. It wasn't a great week. I finished on 50 points total. It was enough to get a very, very small green arrow. I went from like 36k to finishing 35,711th. And I think that's a pretty respectable overall rank, especially where I was earlier on in the season. I had had two top 10k finishes the previous two seasons. So I really wanted that hat trick, the back to back to back. It wasn't to be, but finishing inside the top 50k these days is pretty decent considering there was over 11 million total fpl managers i know they weren't uh, all active i completely get that but there are many more engaged and active managers than there have been in previous seasons so decent enough um rank in terms of game week 38 itself i made two transfers i had two free transfers we knew that harlan wasn't starting so i switched him to harry kane which i'm sure a lot of people did and then for my other move it was to remove one of mcallister or matoma I actually flipped a coin on the deadline stream to decide. In the end, I got lucky because Matoma didn't start, but it didn't matter because McAllister got no points anyway. I think Matoma got one, McAllister finished on two, and I decided not to bring in Eze because he was so highly uh, transferred in. I think he had over 500,000 transfers in for game week 38. And I went for the player that was slightly more differential than him, although he also had about 250k transfers in, which was Odegaard. Now, Odegaard did outscore Eze, but it was just by like one point. Eze got two, Odegaard got three. Little bit annoying, because I knew that Arsenal game would have plenty of goals. I think they won like four or five nil. And for Odegaard to get no returns, that is just classic FPL. So a little bit unfortunate there. In terms of captaincy, it was between Salah, Kane, and Rashford. I went for Rashford. He was the only one to blank from those three players. One of the reasons I went for him was because it was a home match, but also we knew that he was starting. We didn't know that for Salah and Kane. In hindsight, it was pretty obvious that both of them were going to start, especially Harry Kane. We also knew he would get to 90 minutes because that's what he does. So obviously, I wish I'd gone for him. It would have been a lot more points. May have even hit like kind of top 30k or something like that. But I don't think captaining Rashford was a mistake if we look at kind of the underlying numbers which you know i love to do uh, i think he finished on yeah 0.82 expected goals um for the game against fulham for harry kane for example it was 0.94 so it just so happens on the day kane finished those chances rashford didn't it happens sometimes in fpl i don't think it was a massive mistake or anything like that the other only highlight i had really was Fernandez getting 10 points because he was still somewhat of a differential. He took all three bonus points. So that was really nice. Obviously, Harry Kane beat him in terms of points, but his ownership was so much higher. Those points didn't really uh, matter too much for me. Trent conceded like four goals. Absolutely crazy last day of the season for Liverpool. Obviously, the game didn't really matter for either side, but he did get an assist and picked up a bonus point. I think the most frustrating thing for me was probably the Luke Shaw injury now to be fair Man United didn't keep a uh, clean sheet maybe they would have done if Shaw was playing but the difference between Shaw and De Gea when most of us jumped on Man United players back in game week 29 has been a little bit crazy Shaw went and got injured then Man United kept like three clean sheets in a row and then David De Gea who just doesn't really save penalties if you go and ask any Man United fan when they get to a penalty shootout there's almost no confidence whatsoever because De Gea is not a good um, goalkeeper when it comes to making penalty saves he goes and saves one right so no clean sheet but he still gets that whereas Luke Shaw just stuck on my bench because he didn't start which meant I played Trippier who of course got the own goal against Chelsea so a pretty rubbish week but I guess I can't complain too much of finishing on a green arrow and if we add that kind of overall rank to my previous what is this now 13 seasons I think yeah 7-6-13 um, it's actually my fourth worst finish ever 
35,711th. The, the previous ones that were worse is 2019-20 when I finished 162k. Some of you might remember I got hacked that season. The hacking didn't really make a huge difference because I was able to use my wildcard to clear the points before the deadline, but obviously I was forced into using a chip when I didn't want to. But to be honest, I just played really badly that season. 2015-16, uh, I think that was the year that Leicester won the league. I finished 92k. I barely owned Jamie Vardy all season. Massive mistake. And then 2013-14, 104k. I can't really remember what I did wrong that year. I just didn't play that well. Overall, though, I think it's a pretty decent track record. As I've said, the number of players continues to grow year by year. It'll be even more again next year. So it is getting more difficult to finish in those kind of top 20, top 10,000 places. So getting top 40k is probably more than good enough I would say let's see what happens next year I think I'm due a pretty bad season so maybe next year will be the one don't forget to follow along anyway and subscribe it could be a bad one but overall that's the FPL history game week 38 50 points it was a small green arrow I'm pretty happy with how it ended so if you want to check out some of the stats from your season, there's a completely free website that you can use called fploptimize.com. Loads of information and analysis. One of the things it will show you is your team of the year, which is the 15 players that scored the most points while they were in your team. So for example, Trippier got 198 points total. I had him for 141 of those. Obviously, it would have been better if I'd held him throughout all those other points he got as well, but it wasn't to be. I jumped on him quite late. In terms of the goalkeepers that is probably a position that went quite badly for me this year if you think about other goalkeepers that people own Kepa and Ray did really well at times a lot of people had De Gea towards the end of the season Steele etc my highest scoring keeper was Danny Ward with 53 points now to be fair I only actually played him nine times so to play him nine times and get 53 points for a really poor Leicester side is pretty good but in comparison Edison was my next highest scoring keeper with uh, 49 points I played him 16 times so I played him seven more times than my Leicester goalkeeper and got four less points so it wasn't really uh, an ideal situation and by the way when you see that it says that I captain Ward once that was that week where all the games were called off so that's just one of those weird things um, that shows up in terms of defenders um it was a bit of a weird season for defenders in general because if you look at the highest scoring ones, you had Trippier on 198 points. He absolutely smashed it. He didn't quite break the record, which I think is held by kind of Trent and Robertson. They were over um, 200 points, but he got close. Then it was Ben White with 156. Trent also got 156, so way down on previous seasons. Like if we look at um, the two seasons before this, 208 points. It was 160 before that, 210 before that as well. So he is a player that's gone over 200 twice. And then Gabriel was 146. If I just bring up defenders altogether, then you've got like Ben Mee, uh, Cher obviously at Newcastle, Tyro Ming. So in terms of those attacking defenders like a Cancelo, Reese James, Chilwell, etc., they just weren't really here this season. So I got 92 of Trent's 156. Cancelo was my third highest scoring defender. And obviously he left for Bayern Munich halfway through the season. So I don't know if I really necessarily played the defender situation badly i think it was just a bit of a, a weird season for defenders in general uh, the two on the bench were gabriel obviously for arsenal i held him for a little while he was kind of my go-to arsenal defender even though ben white ended up outscoring him uh, over the season then estupinian was 63 points i mean one of the highlights from my season was estupinian getting the goal assist clean sheet against arsenal so he did really well for me when i wildcarded him in in game week 26 i didn't i don't think i owned him before that and he also in the end ended up getting more minutes than lewis dunk as well so he ended up being a really good pick obviously big thing that stands out is how many times i captained certain players so saka twice rashford three Salah 11 and Haaland in 38 game weeks I only captained 17 times I'm sure a lot of you if you put your team into this website will probably see Haaland come out like I don't know 25 maybe even 30 times I just got on that bandwagon a little bit late I did own him from the start and you'll see in a second I captained him I think in game week two but after that it took me a long time to go back to captaining him and that really hurt me I don't think I made a huge amount of mistakes this season like 
obvious really big mistakes like of course sometimes you're going to bring a player in and it doesn't work out well but Harlan captain was definitely one of the mistakes I made uh, and I captained Salah 11 times and he was obviously by far the second most um, captain player so I got 261 points from him 418 from Harland that probably should have been a little bit more skewed towards Harland for sure uh, and then obviously the other midfielders were Martinelli really cheap great attacking option for Arsenal especially in the first half of the season Bruno Fernandes as well he he did he was in my team quite a lot because of all the double game weeks and I felt like it was a season where we didn't necessarily need to worry about that money you remember the discussions around game week 31 do we bring Grealish in the reason that I didn't do that is because I knew that I would have to then remove someone to get Salah back in so I just wanted to keep that spot free and for me it was never up for discussion about getting rid of Fernandes instead obviously the difference between Grealish and Fernandes in terms of money was quite a bit but I didn't feel like I needed that to make my other moves and Fernandes didn't do like amazingly like he wasn't um you know firing every single week but he got a 10 pointer obviously in 38 eight points against uh, Chelsea six against Wolves 11 against Villa uh, five against Spurs as well so he did chip in he probably didn't do quite as well as I wanted but given that the other spot would have probably been Jack Grealish, that did work out quite nicely in the end. And then I think the other kind of big thing that stands out for me is forwards. Harry Kane only finished like nine points behind Haaland, I think it was, for the season. And what was it? It was like 200 and something points. Let me have a look here. 260 something? 263. And yet I only got 66 of those. Now there were times of the season where I own Salah instead of Kane, and that was the right call. Salah did outscore him over periods of time, but over the entire season, it did take me way too long to bring Harry Kane into my team. I think you can obviously look back at that and say that was a mistake. Sometimes we need a good amount of game weeks to realise that what we're doing is incorrect. Like, I think some people like will see a big hit of like blank twice, and that's like, yeah, I've got to get rid of them. I'm never going to play like that, because players like Salah and Kane, they're always going to do well over a season. You just have to hope you jump on them at the wrong, uh, sorry, the right time. And I just didn't do that with Kane. So obviously, part of my season went badly because I held Salah, but then part of the season went really well because I kept faith with him, and then he started scoring. But to only get 66 points from Kane is not ideal when he's absolutely smashed it. And interestingly... I think it was Seb on Twitter that tweeted about this, which I thought was um, kind of cool. If you look at the forwards' um, points total, like I said, Kane only finished nine points behind Haaland. Now, in game week one, I think it was, Haaland got 13 points. And if you remember, a lot of people had Kane and he blanked. And people panicked. I wouldn't even say it was a panic. I think it was the right move to go from Kane to Haaland. But that was a difference of 11 points. So from game week 2 to game week 38, Kane actually outscored Haaland. That's how kind of close it was in the end. I know people will say, well, Haaland didn't play all the minutes, etc., etc. But that's what makes players like Salah and Kane extremely good for FPL. Because you know you can rely on them. Like when we look back at my kind of game weeks in a minute, I do tend to pick players that I know are going to start right and gonna get good minutes i don't think i I, i'd have to go back and check i'm not sure i owned a man city midfielder for very long this year i don't even know if i owned one at all i don't think i ever bought in de bruyne because i always had salah obviously foden wasn't always an option i didn't get greenish when everyone else got him amara is the one i I was kind of liking but i didn't end up getting him either i think i got alvarez a couple of times but that was about it so harry kane a bit of a disappointment uh obviously ivan tony 56 points as well so yeah team of the year Probably as to be expected in most cases. I think the things that stand out, not getting on Trippier early enough. A lot of people had faith in him right from the start. Fair play, I didn't. Newcastle absolutely smashed it, especially first half of the season. Danny Ward, just ridiculous. And I probably should have capped in uh, Harlan a little bit more, which you can see here, right? So this is... This is the two players over the season, Harden at the top and Salah at the bottom. The green is when they were in my team. Uh, obviously, if there's no colour, they weren't in my team at all. And then the purple is when they were on the bench. Obviously, Harden did get injured a couple of times and wasn't necessarily going to start. So I kept him but didn't um, put him in the lineup. And you can just see towards the start of the season where it says times two when I capped in that player went really well or, or was fine in game week one. Even though I think Harlan outscored Salah game week one, there was hardly anything in it. But then if you look at that, game week two, I captain Harlan, didn't captain Salah, that was fine. But game weeks three, four, five, and six, 
Haaland absolutely smashed it. I missed a couple of hat tricks. And that's kind of what killed me early on. The only thing I will say is... I did stick to my way of playing. I think in the end that did help me out. I could have really panicked. And maybe if I would panicked a little bit sooner, I'd have some more points because of captaincy. But overall, I don't think I made a huge amount of kind of bad... Bad, bad decisions in terms of transfers and stuff like that and if you look around game week 16 and obviously 17 was after the world cup i was always captain in harlan then and salah didn't do great until kind of 23 onwards i think the thing that frustrates me the most about this and obviously there's always hindsight calls i wish i'd captain that player that scored loads more points is when harlan got these kind of first couple of big scores I said to myself, that's it. There's no point in putting myself through this every weekend. He's obviously getting less points as well. I'm just going to captain Haaland next time. And I must have said that to myself like two, three, maybe even four times. And I just kept going back to Salah. And that is kind of the frustrating thing. And obviously in the end, if I was brave enough to captain Salah a few times towards the end of the season, I would have actually gained more points. But the damage was done by then. I just couldn't take it. So I think these two players kind of were the, the big ones for my season. And at the start, it went kind of wrong. It went well holding Salah towards the end. But captaincy, I just got wrong too many times. So I'm just going to finish off by taking a look back at the season as a whole. Some of the game weeks that went really well. Some of the ones that went really bad. Some of the highlights and stuff like that as well. So this was my game week one team. If you remember at the start of the season, I do think pricing was pretty kind. Like Haaland only being 11.5 million. Martinelli was like 6 or 6.5. Pretty much all of my first 11 was made up of Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool and Man City players. I did have Danny Ward in goal. Obviously, it's hard to turn down £4 million goalkeepers. Wanted to see how Leicester would do. Obviously, in the end, they did really badly, got relegated, but we didn't necessarily know that at the time. And a lot of us had Pedro Neto as well. I tweeted about this the other day. He was in so many teams at the start of the season. In fact, we can probably see exactly how many. He was in 1.4 million teams, 5.5 million. He ended on two assists for the season now I still look back and I don't necessarily think that was a really bad pick you always need someone that's a bit cheaper in your team to enable the rest of the team right so for 5.5 million I don't think there was a huge amount of other options at the time some people had Leon Bailey he didn't exactly do that much better I mean in the end Andreas Pereira was probably a better player than both of them but again we didn't know it at the time so that was my game week one side I think if we just go through I'm not going to go through every single game week but if we look back at the first few weeks obviously Haaland captain not Salah like I already spoken about this is where it kind of started going badly from like game week four onwards Haaland hat trick which I think was against Crystal Palace if I remember right yeah Crystal Palace hat trick uh, and I thought okay he's got a hat trick can he can he continue doing that well of course he can and am I going to captain him no of course I'm not so I missed the hat trick against Nottingham Forest as well Salah did get 10 points that week so it wasn't quite so bad and I know I got a green arrow uh, that week because I tweeted about it. I remember doing that but i think this is when he played newcastle and he got the yeah he got the assist off his shoulder in like the last minute so we did get a little bit lucky there uh, and then in game week six uh obviously it was nine points and i think it was game week nine when i wild carded and and harlan got 23 points against man united Do you remember they absolutely smashed them that was one of the worst points that season now obviously in the end uh, sorry overall i did all right like madison got 18 points i wildcarded danny ward back into my side and i played him from game weeks 9 to 16 that's when he got most of my points so that kind of thing went well even like solanke on the game week 9 wildcard if you look back at his season uh, it was two assists against leicester goal and assist against fulham goal against leeds assist against Everton for his price he did really well but that was just a bad period of the season for me that that kind of mega haul for Haaland against Man United of all teams that just really kind of not killed any enthusiasm it was just like it was a bad moment in the season if we look back at the game week history like I was already on a run of red arrows and the wild card just didn't make it any better whatsoever this was the rank I was at going into game week nine one million then it was down to 1.1 I did slowly start going up but again it came back down in game week 13 which was probably yeah missed haul from Harlan when Salah only got kind of two points so it wasn't really great for me at all um i thought i turned it around after the world cup because in game week 17 i got 104 points if you remember i had like mason mount i had that midfield five 
which went really well that week. I had Haaland captain, so I was captain in Haaland at that point. Salah got 12, Rashford got 14. And I went for, hopefully you can see this, like flicking back through the screens. And I went from 710k to 385. But again, the red arrows started kicking in again. So I never... I never really got any momentum at any point in the season. And part of doing well in FPL is just not giving up. Um, and it all kind of started going well from like game week 23. I think this is when the double game week started. You remember Liverpool had one in game week 25. Loads of people for weeks were telling me I'm not going to have salaries finished. Liverpool are rubbish. And obviously in the end, everyone bought Salah anyway. He did really well um, that week. And the Green Arrows basically continued then until pretty much the end of the season i had two red arrows from game weeks 24 all the way up until game week 38 and both of those red arrows were tiny it was like 40k to 40,408 and then i dropped to 42,834 so they weren't even that big um, of an issue but even though i did well here game week 26 was a little bit I mean, I can't complain because I got a green arrow. I went from 392 to 367. But if you remember, 49 points. This was the week that Salah got 21. I think it was 21 against Man United. I took out Trent, Nunez, and Salah after the double game week. And they absolutely smashed Man United 7-0. So although that was a night, although it was a green arrow, and again, can't, you can never complain about a green arrow. For Man United to get battered again, so Haaland's already smashed them, I haven't captained him, and now I've removed all my Liverpool players on a wild card. then they go and smash Man United, it just wasn't a good point in the season, but the game week 26 wild card did work out really well, and I think two things, are, or basically the same thing, but over the last two seasons, the thing that I've done really well is adapted to new information and news about fixtures, so we didn't know about all the Brighton, Brentford uh, doubles over like 26, 27, 28, whenever they were, uh, until quite late on. And I decided to wildcard into it. And I did exactly the same last year. And I think it was also game week 26. We suddenly got loads of information that these teams were doubling and there was going to be blank game weeks. We could free hit, etc. And the previous season, not many people took that on board. It was only a few of us that went with that direction. This year, it was a little bit different. Loads of people went in 26. But I think being able to react to that information is handy but also i still think that double game weeks are slightly underrated in general in the community you remember all the comments why are you wildcarding into brighton and brentford players we we really do underestimate how much those extra fixtures really help when it's like a man united liverpool man city everyone's on board but even with these players i mean brighton did really well in the end obviously and brentford did great again as well but you know what i mean right they're not necessarily fpl players that we're looking at so game week 26 wildcard was a big win for me and it just kind of kept going well for the rest of the season then like game week 29 was um bench boost week i think every single player apart from luke shaw and fernandez and man united players were annoying for the end of the season kept getting injured and stuff like that every other player returned to me including watkins 17 points i captain rashford for 24 my bench boost was raya kane odegaard botman eight seven six and nine points so i've done really well with bench boost over the last few seasons without always using it um, on double game weekers and then i know some of it's going to be recency bias i did talk about that period between game weeks 9 and 16 when i wildcarded in solanke and ward that went really well but a lot of my highlights are from the end of the season i guess that makes sense because that's when i was getting all the green arrows one of them was game week 32 getting in sam johnston for his 10 points and if you look at uh, how many points he got over the season he got four and nine the week before uh, the two weeks before and since then he's barely made 10 points for the rest of the season zero one two six one and three so he just about got there so to get that 10 point was fantastic but castagna scoring a goal i already told this story on stream but i'm sat in uh, a restaurant getting pizza in galway with the family and i see that leicester have conceded and to be honest it didn't even bother me because if you remember that free hit week Unless you were prepared to drop an Arsenal attacker or a Liverpool attacker, there weren't really many other defenders to choose from, right? So I, I kind of knew already that a lesser defender was going to be bad. I'd already got lucky with Danny Ward. It couldn't keep continuing, or could it? So they conceded, and then I look on Twitter later on, and I see 1-0 Leicester. I'm like, I, I can't remember if it was 1-0. No, it couldn't have been 1-0 because they were down. It was 1-0, on it? Let me just double check. Uh, sorry, they ended up winning 2-1 against Wolves. My memory's not all that great. Look, I'm getting old, okay? Forgive me. Uh, and I see that it's 2-1. I'm reading the description of the guy, and I just see Castagna slots at home. And then, like, I was just like, yes, in, in the restaurant. And they're like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I'm like, you honestly don't 
you're not going to care. Don't even worry about it. It's just football. It's just FBL. Uh, and I just said, just just leave me to it for a second. I'll be back in a minute. Excuse, excuse me. I didn't leave the table, uh, but I just like, I'll be back to normal, not thinking about football in just a second. So that 10 pointer was absolutely fantastic. And in, and overall, game week 32 was pretty good. Like Tony, for example, I know I'm rambling on a bit here, um, but if you remember, a lot of us took him out because of the potential ban that was coming which didn't end up coming for a long time to get Watkins in instead so we did the switcheroo basically so remember Harlan came out for Watkins and then Tony was the one that went back to Harlan and that was a really good move because Tony just ended up blanking quite a lot apart from game week 32 when I free hit him back in so that kind of Harlan to Watkins Tony back to Harlem move we got extremely lucky with how well that went because if you remember and I'm just going to bring Watkins up here back in whenever it was um I think it was game week 27 maybe maybe 26 can't remember when we did the the move a lot of people got Havertz instead and he just didn't do very well at all whereas Watkins just didn't stop scoring over this time 8 5 8 9 7 16 points and for people to have Havertz who kept blanking over that time it was just such a big win in terms of kind of green arrows and just kind of just to finish off here i'm just trying to find the game week history button um obviously some other highlights i think it was game week 36 yeah estropinian 17 pointer was great as well i'm sure i've missed out some other really good um points this season but that, that was definitely another one estropinian i also brought in isaac had him captain didn't go uh quite that well because obviously some people had like wilson captain and stuff like that and obviously i did read the minutes wrong there completely but overall i think it was a pretty good season 35k or well, 35,711 11th is not a bad uh, season overall whatsoever. And the back end of the season went really well. So there you go. There's some highlights. There's some lowlights. Some good things. Some bad things, etc. Let me know how your season went. Where did you end up finishing? Are you looking forward to next season? I know a lot of people are now probably kind of worn out. My advice would be take a break. Don't think about FPL. There's nothing you can do until prices come out. And even then, you don't have to pick your team straight away. But if you do want to pick your team straight straight away i'll be back with the content so if you've enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like hit that subscribe button and i'll catch you again soon mm -hmm.